there's only like one place I'm actually get proper terrified when I'm driving. Shaking like a leaf. So steep. I just wish you could see how steep this is. What's that white stuff out there, mate? Exactly what I'm about to point out. Far out, it must be getting high now, mate. We are currently on the roof of Australia during a once in a 20 year storm event. Wow, this is unbelievable. This is the most amazing four wheel drive experience I've ever probably had. We are on a Victorian high country pub crawl, mate. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Look, the good thing is, mate, some of these pubs are very iconic. You've probably heard of them, but I guarantee there's one pub in there that will show you you've never heard of before that you'll want to go and have a beer at. Speaking of going to beer, mate, I say it every time, I probably sound like a broken record, but I don't think people care because beer's fantastic. Go and get one out of the fridge, sit in your favourite camp chair, and let's get stuck into the Victorian high country, four-wheel drive action style. Ooh, can't wait. Let's get down to the next pub, mate. You! <laughs> Our journey begins in the sleepy little town of Woods Point. A one pub, one street little gem hidden away in the hills just a few hours east of Melbourne. We're rolling in late in the day, so our first port of call is pub number one on our Victorian high country pub crawl. The iconic commercial hotel. With the trucks parked up for the night and the fire crackling, we've got plenty of time to sink a few brews with a great bunch of mates in an historic old country pub. Joining us on this adventure is local guide Michael, a bloke who knows this part of the world like the back of his hand. Now, Michael also runs his own performance and maintenance shop and is wheeling a decked out 80 series he's built up for tough driving. Keeping the 80 series theme going, next in convoy is Shono and of course, Sooty the 80. We can expect a bit of rivalry between the two boys on this one, I reckon. Yours truly will be behind the wheel of one Schmick Izuzu D-Max, which we've kitted out for both touring and a bit of tough driving. Next in the convoy is Rocket Rod from Wholesale Autos, wheeling that monster of a rig he calls a Forby, complete with some new rubber he's going to be giving a test on this trip. A new face to the convoy is Pete from iDrive. Now, iDrive, of course, is known for their handy plug-and-play throttle controllers. Pete will be behind the wheel of a very neat little rig and showing off the capability of a new throttle controller. Rounding out the convoy is Jay from Clearview Accessories. Jay's mint looking rig is kitted out with a host of their off-road products from the famous Clearview mirrors to fridge slides and much more. We've got one heck of an adventure planned for the boys with snow, pubs aplenty and I for one can't wait to get started tomorrow. Woohoohoo! Chilly out there this morning. All right. Here we go. Oh yeah, you can always tell when Sooty starts up. Yeah, how good is the high country, mate? And it started off right here at Woods Point. It's a few ticks from my boxes, mate. I have to be up there with one of my favourite pubs, mate. Look at this little town. You, you step back 60 years here. Well, absolutely, mate. And look, on, on this particular trip, it wasn't a coincidence we started at a nice, iconic pub like that, mate. I reckon we do do the same and, um, and try and do a bit of a high country pub crawl. So I like the way you're thinking, mate. Um, I don't know though, I can only think of a couple. We, we probably won't find one up the top, I wouldn't think. No, mate, I've, there's one I know of, um, right in the bush. You've never probably heard of it, but a great little pub. I'll, um, I'll show you that one. Oh, sign me up. The beauty about Woods Point is that you can be locking the hubs just a few minutes out of town, and so it's not long till we're airing down and getting ready to hit the steep stuff. Having driven the high country numerous times in the past, taking no chances here, I'm going straight down to 18 PSI and I might go lower still. Our plan on this trip is to make our way north and eventually to the little town of Jamison. The route there is going to be a maze of backtracks and bush camps and along the way we'll tackle Mount Skeen, one of the highest roads in Australia which while closed in winter can be accessed with the right permits. If there's one thing the Vic High Country is known for, it's pants wedding climbs just like this one, a steep and committing ascent straight up out of the valley. With rock steps, loose shale and some massive ruts, a track like this shouldn't be undertaken lightly. But with winches and all the recovery gear on hand, we're keen to check it out. 
Now, mate, I'm not going to say I'm nervous. Nah. I'm nervous. It's, look, <laughs> there's only like one place I'm actually get proper terrified when I'm driving. The word it's, terrified is not one I would like to be terrified. <laughs> is, this is a high country because you probably can't see it on the camera, but this nah. is super steep. This is the start of the hill and it just goes up like the gradient gets up to, I don't know what percentage, but it's, it's gnarly. Uh -huh. um, we're going to send Michael up first. Yes. You've got twin locked 80, 37s. Yeah. Um, he struggles. Well, well, it's beer o'clock with lunch, I think. <laughs> no. no, look, we've done this before, this hill. Yeah, we've done yeah. it before. If you get any moisture on it, it's an absolute no-go. No, no it's go. pretty dry. I'm going to say, I'm going to drive it. And if I don't, it's going to be spectacular. <laughs> you, you're on a big angle and you just don't want to get it wrong. Because you as you see, yeah. yeah. Oh, if I get up that, confidence, I'm ready to go. Don't stop. Yeah, just, just keep going to the top. As I reckon we just watch him though, we'll yeah. see what he does, yeah. probably just drive it, make it look easy. Other boys are right up top, you can't even see them. They're yeah, they want to see what goes on because there's another little pinch you got to cross over the track, which is a bit mm. sketchy. They want to see what goes on up there, which yeah. I don't blame them. Yep. And, um, All right, let's pick Mike up and you'll... You'll make know. it look easy, I reckon. You, right, right up a drain pipe, yeah. look at this. Swing locked on 37s, auto, petrol. Yep, Michael has absolutely built his rig for this kind of terrain. And with years of experience driving in this part of the world, well, I hope he just drives it, or <laughs> we're in trouble. That's open. So that's the bit where that stops. That's open. Yeah. <laughs> Back down and I'll go and get the D-Max, mate. <laughs> with both lockers in, Michael has just walked up that step. Now, Shauno's up next and might have a harder time with only a rear locker. All right, ready to go. Hey, you that first little rock step's quite steep, and the second one looks absolutely huge from here. Yes! Oh! Up we go. He's done it! Now, that's an impressive drive. I would have thought there'd be more wheel spin, though, with no front locker, eh? He hasn't got a front locker. That's what he did. No. No, no, no. Well, that's two for two. Pressure's on. A little big truck. Bring her up. Sometimes even your best mates hide things from you. And it turns out that this slippery gypsy right here has secretly installed something on Sooty See, to give him an edge. Just in case I need ah. to be a recovery vehicle, mate. Ah. I don't have a hand ah. right. I'm driving this or, be, or I'm angry, I can't talk. <laughs> well, I've just found out that my good friend Shauno has stuck a sneaky front locker in old Sooty without telling me. And that just makes me even more determined to get up there and show him what you can do in a relatively stock vehicle. Let's give it a go. I'm nervous I'm not even driving. It's taking a good approach though, nice and nice and steady. Key really is throttle control, just be really gentle on the throttle. Momentum really isn't your friend on these hills because it can go a bit pear-shaped. Throttle control and just enough momentum to bounce me over some of these tough bits nice is what's going to be required here. Get back, you stand away from me. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. That's the, that's the exact moment I felt the front locker really coming to its own. It just <laughs> really just helped me get on that, that last bit of rock there. Oh, he just makes a lot of noise, that bloke. Get away! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Rightio, no choice here but to break the winch out. And the good thing about the Victorian high country, of course, is there's no shortage of trees to winch off. And something tells me we're all going to need them. With that first section done, it's time to park up and let Shauno make some more excuses. Right. Yeah, I do want to tell you, I wanted to see how many trips I would get away with, but one turns out step. one rock step the first day of having a locker, you can tell. All right. Well, Rocket is oh, twin man. locked, yeah. 35s. And he's got a loose screw. That's going to help him probably. <laughs> or, or it won't go so well. But what I'm worried about, he's got a lot of weight in that yeah. rear end. Yeah. And, and on a hill this steep, yeah. all that weight down, he's going to lift tires, I think. Yeah, but I don't know. He's got, he can wheel, man. And he's got that auto, just got smooth yeah. control. <laughs> I told him there's there's no harm in winching. He didn't even answer me. He just walked off. <laughs> he doesn't like to winch. Wow. This is hectic. Yeah, I don't think I got the front diff lock doesn't seem to be coming on. The diff lock? 
That is going to have a big impact on how he drives. No front diff lock. No. no, it's got to be something to do with the wiring at the front again. I tell him now. You should have, have a, if you want to get a camera in here. Oh, is that your leg? Yeah. Shaking. It's shaking like I a leaf. I can see it. Yeah. Shaking like a leaf. Yeah. Or you're listening to some '80s rock music. One of the two. Yeah, both of them are shaking. <laughs> it's steep, isn't it? Yeah. And you get a little bit. You, you, you get you're so steep that your windscreen washers are just overflowing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. For winter. Yeah, your front lock is not working at all. Is it your rear must be? I'm stuck in my seat pouch, got me stuck. Without a shadow of a doubt, the safest thing to do here is to winch. This is no place to go sideways and possibly roll. Yep! From there, I reckon he'll be able to continue under his own steam. Now, Pete is no slouch behind the wheel, having done a whole heap of off-roading all around Australia. It might look like he's driving really subtly up here, but that is often the key. He's picking fantastic lines and driving this like a boss. Unfortunately, he's got caught up in exactly the same spot. Just got a winch from here, I think. That's nah, a good drive. Good drive. Front locker would be nice. Not everyone has a front locker. Mysteriously appearing in the night, growing like mushrooms after the rain. That's ah! Ah! real secret of this track. I'd Get say out! it's just, just good throttle control. If you just... look at how I drive, it's just. Get out, <laughs> Get out of here. With that pinch done, we're now halfway up the climb, and up ahead, things are just getting steeper. All right, here we go. Second part of this hill that is sketchy. Yep, that's a good line. Woohoo! That's sketchy. That that's is sketchy. Line. Absolutely sketchy. So steep. I just wish you could see how steep this is. Okay, Rocket, you're up, brother. This is going to be hectic. Whoa, here we go. Try and do this the hard way. Unfortunately, I lost my front diff lock. What that means is that when I lift the front wheel, I lose everything. So I've got to be really, really careful here. He's an absolute madman, but somehow he wheels that thing up tracks like this all the time. Feels too sketchy, just jump on that winch. Yeah, it does. It sort of feels like... Can I go backwards safely anyway? He's in a relatively safe spot right there where he's got stuck. We're going to try and reposition him See if we can't drive him out under his own steam. All right, so what's a different way I can tackle this? This is like a bit of a step up. If you, co you come up here, you should do it, but... Well, do you want me to go all the way over there? Yeah, just get that tyre up on here and you'll feel heaps better. That's it. Get the other way. Look at that, that new line seems to have worked for him. What a madman. Well done, Rocket. Well done, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not there yet, you're not yeah. there yet. <laughs> I'm going to take my hat off to your rocket. You, my friend, can wheel. Yeah. 
Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Pete is making this look easy. He really has that underrated, sort of calm approach to the drive, and it just works. There's no wheel spin, there's no craziness, there's no there's no wheel lifts even. He just makes it look easy, and the proof is in the pudding. Good work, mate. Rightio, AJ, you've seen everyone else, mate. You've seen the line to take. You've got this. Superb throttle control. Up we go. That's it, mate. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Jay, that is not the spot to put those wheels in the air, mate. This is the top of the climb, and it's just a steep roll all the way down from here. Can I go back? Yeah, you can go back, but just really gentle on everything you do. Step. Yep, and just back. Slowly, slowly. No hard brake movements, no hard brake movements. Magical, magical. Scared the daylights out of me. I can see. Um, keep going back, you can go back on that. You can keep going back on that. The second part of this drive up to the top here, of course, isn't too bad. However, you do have to cross over on the left-hand corner, back up to the top, and it does feel ever so slightly sketchy. And of course, that's the high country for you. It's a committing part of the world. The tracks out here are yeah, not for you. beginners. That's you. That's you. Keep it on that line. Now turn to me. Turn to me. Well driven, mate. Well driven. Winter days in the high country are absolutely beautiful, but they're short. And it's getting to that time where we need to find a camp. Hey, uh, Rocket, you got a copy there, mate? Yes, bud. Mate, I've noticed you're rocking some new bar work on the big 79. Do you like it? I love it. I've got to tell you what, it's the new Toro bar from Off-Road Animal. And I, I tell you what, I couldn't be more chuffed with this thing. I love the lines on it. Obviously, um, it's just been built to suit the 79 series. And you could have at least painted it, though. I've noticed you've got... It's just um, in, in bare metal. No, they were showing it off to me when they were actually manufacturing the thing and I actually fell in love with it at a very early stage. And I told them, I said, whatever you do, I want to show off your workmanship. So when you're ready, I said, don't paint it, don't zinc coat it, everything else that they actually do to make them uh, uh, weatherproof. I said, I just want you to clear coat it because I want to show people exactly what goes into this beautiful bar. And we actually call it the forged look. Very cool, mate, very cool. It's making um, one tough 79 look even tougher, in my opinion. Unreal. No, I love it to death. I reckon it goes with what I do, and it certainly goes with the old rust buckets. You've got a few knocks and bings in it, and I think the look of the forged and, and the, the Toro bar goes really well with this car. At the top of this ridge, we found the perfect place to set up camp for the night. Well, this might rank as one of the best views about it from a campsite. Holy heck. Have a go at this, would you? Camping doesn't get much better than this, but with overnight temperatures due to drop to around zero and with some serious wind chill up here, our first priority is getting a fire going. Fortunately for us, wood isn't hard to come by in this part of the world, but of course, it's important to keep the fire well away from the trees and keep it attended. Winter camping is great fun if you prepare correctly and the boys are soon swinging into camp setup. When you've got a stiff breeze like this and you're quite exposed as we are on this ridge, it's important to check the direction the wind is coming from and set up your sleeping arrangements on the lee side of your four-wheel drive. That'll give you a bit of protection overnight and keep you just that little bit warmer. with camp set up and the snow of Mount Skeen visible in the far distance, it's time for Chef De Whale to get into the kitchen. Now, what do you got for us tonight, mate? I hope it's something warm, cause I am freezing. Well, how's this for a campsite? Nice and cold on top of one of the highest mountains around. So 
It might actually go down as one of the coldest campsites I've ever been at, but with such a campsite, you need, you need a meal that's gonna warm you up from the inside out, and that's why I've got, I'm gonna do a chicken hot pot tonight. So it's a, it's a one pot wonder. I always go on about one pot wonders, but they're so good because they're so easy to make, and that's exactly tonight's mission. Make something really warm, really quick, make the boys happy. So first things first, I've gotta jump into the old Dometic and um, pull out a couple of ingredients. So first things first, the old iron jack to start things off. I'm gonna grab one of these sharp knives. How cold is it tonight? <laughs> you can hardly see you. It's ridiculously cold. That's why I'm cooking up the old chicken hot pot, mate. Oh, can I get something out of the you, fridge? You can, I need chorizo. Yep, Spanish so, sausage. Yeah, Spanish sausage, mate. Yeah, I'm sure you have know that then. Have you ever had a, um, a Spanish hot cock? Exactly what I'm cooking. Hot pot? Hot cock, because I'm chicken. Oh, yes, 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 so I have, a actually. Bunch of chicken, I'm gonna have. cut it right up. It's gonna be a most amazing meal, like a good. paella. All right, so we got, you need bacon? Ah, uh, yeah, bacon will be good. A bit of chorizo, a bit of bacon, obviously chicken. I'm just gonna start with a couple of onions to start with, and then um, chorizo goes straight in after that. What have you got look here? That. Oh, look at you. And, and finally, we've getting all the ingredients out of your fridge. Yes, 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 I'm, I'm carrying all of the, whoa! Whoopsie daisy, that's your beer, mate. Oh, sorry, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you doing? I'm so sorry. Oh, heck. So, how do we start this? Right, first things first, mate. Have you got the chorizo out? Uh, not yet, mate, no. So. Oh, heck, no, I'm missing a few ingredients. You're right, sorry, bro. You may as well, you may as well get me a beer out of your fridge, mate, because yep, it's done. about time you shouted. Ah. So onions first, obviously, just peel the skin off and um, give them a good old cut up. I'm not gonna do it like real like thin, I'm just gonna like cut them into bigger pieces is, is the key for this sort of night. You're just gonna... That have you got the fridge out cold, bro. Oh, sorry, no, I forgot that. Fridge sorry. of mine, how would you even know how cold my fridge is? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I got it. I got the chorizo, mate. Ah, oh, beauty, beauty. One of the things with the old chicken hot pot in the high country, it's super cold here, right? So you've got to heat yourself up from the inside out. So obviously you're going to use a little bit of chilli. Like yes, you do. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to. Do. And we've got spicy chorizo here, so. Ooh, yes. Oh, so. Look they look. Gee oh, they're divine. You get, get one of these up here, <laughs> and you'll be you're loving life, mate. So I'm just going to grab this spicy chorizo. That's some sizzle right there. Oh, yeah, I like that you leave a bit of onion peel in there, too. That's we'll Just get rid of that. Yeah, Don't yeah, show yeah, anyone sure. that, because I'm a chef, right? <laughs> right, so I've got a little bit of bacon here. And here we go, we've got a bit of chicken tenderloins. Like, you can use breast fillet, thigh fillet. Just happened to be that Woolies had a special on tenderloins. Basically, I'm going to cut them straight in half. But I reckon it could do with a couple of chilies, mate. All right, just going to... Because that's the thing, if you've, got a, if you've got a good sharp knife, you don't even need a chopping board. Look at that. The other thing you want to do... Yep. Slippery hands again, unfortunately. Would you like me to help you out there, mate? No, it's so cold. <laughs> That's that old excuse. I'm just gonna, it's so cold. I'm just gonna rip out, probably like, I'd say, good old knife hands worth of uh, garlic. Two, two knife hands worth of garlic, whack that in. Well, that smells divine. How good's that? Garlic, chili, we've got chorizo, Ooh. onion. It's all sort of coming together now. I'm just gonna rip the chicken straight in the middle. So I'm basically just, Folding that through. Did you just say fold? Yeah. Stir, yeah. not stir. No, fold. Toyota drivers. No, no. You know what passes the capsicum? Yep. The other capsicum? Is. Oh, that. it's a tomato, bro. <laughs> I didn't know my, my camp lights on when I grabbed it out. I thought these are two capsicums. Don't be afraid to go like big pieces either. This is, I think, where a lot of like camp chefs come undone. You're probably the campest bloke I know. <laughs> What I'm gonna do now? Yes. You've got you got the capsicum in there. You there's, have. A, there's a random tomato in there. A little bit of um. What do you got there, mate? The old basil and rocket pesto. Oh, you rocket! <laughs> We're putting you in the dinner. You're getting a call up, mate. Oh, it's too cold. It's, it's too cold. It's not gonna. Yeah, that's it. No, All right. just go like that. <laughs> That's it. No, you got it shorter strokes. It's, it's, it's just a cold. It's night. actually got too cold. That's the problem. It's actually... Now you can get it out of there. That's there it. we go. Now you can just. We're going light. A fair bit of pesto here. I've got another pesto here. Yeah, you need another one. There's a lot of meat in here, we're bro. Doing it, we're doing a fair bit of chicken here. Again, just cut cut, cut the outside in one quick jerk motion. Just put it straight in. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Right. that. That's actually looking really good. It is. It is. Sometimes these meals actually surprise the heck out of me, to be honest. Yeah. Anything else need to go in here? Just, I've really got just, the raw end of the stick just, here. Just get that. Oh, OK. Got, Come on, you get a stronger right hand than that, mate. I'm just gonna rip in a bunch of chicken stock. I'm gonna go a little bit more, to be honest with you, mate. Oh, it's hot, it's so hot. Yep, that's what you want. You want a yeah, lot yeah. of heat in this. A lot I of heat, so you should push down on this, to be honest. You're gonna put rice in this as well. Yeah, man. Right, so I'm getting it. That's where the I'm Spanish, the see old Spanish comes into, yep. into play, so. Not on me, just in the pot is where we want that, yep. So. 
Lovely to watch, isn't it? Give That's about enough. That's about enough. Actually. So just use your brain when you come to this sort of stage. How much chicken stock's enough? Well, I'd reckon about that about much. There. So just Australian long grain. Could have gone basmati if you wanted to splash out, but tonight we're not. I don't know how much to say. Like, I want to say like two of those. You know what I mean? Is that all? Just, just stir that Sorry, Sorry, bro. Like. Sorry, chef. See what it looks like. Sorry, chef. I'm gonna go for another one. Just one more. That's probably about enough. Think? Three pours of that. So what's gonna happen is that that rice is actually gonna absorb a lot of the moisture in there, come together, and we should have like oh, quite a mate. quite a like how, how long do you thick think? consistency. You just rip these down a little bit. Exactly right. Grab the lid on, and it's probably about a beer and a half later we'll have dinner Speaking ready. Speaking of which, Ooh. Your shout, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's about time for your shout. Yeah, no, I'll buy you a beer. I, I, I am so cold. <laughs> it is as a cold night. It and, is um, freezing cold. The best news is. Oh my god! Oh my this god, one, this crazy. one. Look what's happened. Look what's happened. The, that the, is the rice is absorbed, yes. and this is, is something you don't see every day. No. The gas bottle just ran out too, just at the precise moment when she's cooked. So, how many trips reckon that gas bottle has done? Victoria High Country has done all Southeast Queensland, <laughs> Cape York, and um, it just, Good on you. It just finished up Good right on now. You, so, get the boys. Because... My boys, in you get. Hey, oh, I thought you were about to eat that. No, I was, 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 was going to no, get angry. Gonna... Look at all that. Right. Look at that. That's actually That's really good. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Oh, really good. Mm. A taste of that. We've got the pesto with the old uh, chorizo. We've got chicken. We've got oh. capsicum. A little tomato chucked in for good luck. Oh. How good is having hot food, though? Mm. It warms the inside of you. It just warms you up from the inside out. Get the old one pot wonder going. Then anyone can make this. It's so good. And I've still got like half a pot to go. This is what's so good about That's it. Really so good. I reckon we don't stand around here too long. You're out. I'm, I'm going to the fire. <laughs> We're going You're on your straight own. to the fire. You're on your own. Enjoy this. This is a fantastic meal. Cheers, folks. Oh, that is mm. good. It's really good. That's man. unreal. Really good. Mm. Oh, my tongue is so cold. If you've always wanted to go on a four-wheel drive action trip with us, now's your chance. We're giving away a Money Can't Buy experience for you and a mate to ride shotgun on an upcoming four-wheel drive action show. Plus, there's also three $250 Snatch clothing vouchers up for grabs. If you truly want a once-in-a-lifetime four-wheel drive action experience, then enter below for your chance to win. Morning dawns bright and clear in the high country. Now, despite the cold, there's few places in Australia I'd rather wake up to, and I reckon the boys would have to agree. Well, it's freezing cold this morning, three degrees to be precise. Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here, a little bit of a trick, just gonna pour the old boiling water in the Stanley. Have a go at that, will you? Perfect amount. Now, a little trick here, folks. Grab yourself a couple of eggs. Don't be afraid. Just drop those bad boys in the water. Whoops, watch out. Boiling hot water. A couple of eggs in there. Stick the lid back on. I'm just gonna chuck that in the back of the D-Max. And come morning tea, I'll fish those eggs out of there. Use the water for a cuppa. Eggs will be hard boiled. I got myself a little snack. You don't have to worry about them. They're all safe in there. Chuck that in the back. We'll have those later on. We've got a massive day on the tracks planned out and you can't tackle that on an empty stomach. Fortunately, Jay's whipped out the Clearview kitchen so we can get some hot brekkie on the go. Good timing, Jay. Have a go of this little setup, hey? Beautiful. I brought some bacon and some eggs, mate. You got that? Yes, you're yeah, on, you're on, on, you're on. It's already started. So the cornerstone of any good day in the high country is a nice warm breakfast, I reckon. They come down and cook it. Well, the Clearview Pantry, mate, folds out to be a proper kitchen, doesn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Heaps of space, two benches. You keep all this stuff inside here, don't you? That's, so That's I, keep, I keep all my cooking utensils and everything inside it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just commandeer your kitchen, mate. I do this, I've got a habit of just coming in and just cooking. I really like this idea as well, this pantry. Obviously, everything sort of slides back in together, folds up, up, and up then up what, the just lifts back? Lifts back up and in. So if you don't need the drop down at all, then it goes into the expander as well with a little just, clip on the front. So it just slides out. And it just slides straight out. It's good for a canopy though, isn't it? Even like yeah. the back of a wagon, yep. you've got all your kitchen stuff in one 
easy area. I like this. And you've got a little hatch at the front so you can access, even when it's all stored away, you can still access all your bits and pieces. You've got your cups and your, yep. and your knives and forks and stuff like that. That's exactly that, mate, a pantry. Have a go at this, mate. They don't, call you, well, they don't call you Chef Whale at all, but... <laughs> Look at that. That is, that is a masterpiece. Another one-pot wonder, mate. Yeah, got a name for that? Yeah. What do you call it? The old eggy mongrel mix. <laughs> I like it. There you go, Jay. Hope you're hungry, mate. And you've got, you've got guts made of steel because this is coming your way. <laughs> a lot of cheese in there. Mm. That behind us. Covered in snow right now, Mount Skeen. That's our... Well, it's not our end goal. The Jamison Pub's our end goal, but we've got a long way to go to get to that. Absolutely, a few, We've got few tracks. A lot of tracks. And a, and a pub I'm still yet to show you. Oh, your pub on top of the hill. I looked, I racked my brains. There's no pubs up here. Not that you know, mate. But like I said, this one's a bit of a, you gotta know people to get invited to this pub. Really? And um, is a publican? play your cards right. There, oh, absolutely is a public. What pub doesn't have a publican? Okay. Now, I don't know what Sean knows on about, but we're not gonna find out sitting around here. So it's time to get packed up. The Vic High Country is a pristine place to camp, so leave it as you found it. Take out your rubbish, and if you're unlucky to come across a campsite where someone hasn't done the right thing, take their rubbish out with you. You'll thank yourself afterwards. We're soon back on the tracks and following Michael to our next destination. Hey, uh, Michael, you got a copy there, mate? Sure do, over. Mate, the terrain's starting to get steep again. It usually means one thing in this area. Uh, more tough tracks, eh? That's the one. We're gonna find some uh, beauties out here today, I reckon, on uh, heading on some back tracks. Heading up to this uh, nice white snow ahead of us. Yeah, beauty, mate. All this country through here is just pretty wild and sort of untamed, mate. I love it. Let's um, get right in, eh? Up ahead is our first river crossing of the trip, which thankfully has a hard base and is pretty manageable. Just around the bend, though, there is something a bit more challenging. First little mud. Wouldn't say little, but it's, it's like that real red clay stuff. Up we go. Oh, that is slippery. I thought he had it there, but no, he's come to a stop. There we go. <laughs> and I notice he's not using his front locker. Good on you, mate. <laughs> Have a second go. Very slippery. I want to try and take another line. Let's see how you go with those new tyres of yours. Come on! Come on! Go, go, go! Go! Angry, angry girl! Hey! <laughs> go, Rocket! He's a madman! I like an angry girl! <laughs> Love an angry girl! <laughs> Pete's turn now, and look at him go. That's just immaculate throttle control. He's allowing just enough wheel spin to clear the tracks out, but not enough that he just continues to slip. I reckon Pete yes. is one to watch on the driving front. Easy. The boy can wheel. He walked up that. That was one of the better drives I've seen on this one. I had to give it the everything you get up there. Brought that power in nice and early, which just managed to keep it up in the, uh, the higher rev range, which was great. Rightio, Jay's got a lot of weight up the back of his truck, and that's gonna play against him on this particular scenario. He's going the hard, that one. Whoop. You're going a little bit too left hand down. You want to take this left hand line a little bit. Just try and go in the middle, like split the difference between straight up and the way you're going. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. You can see traction is just about gone here. Last vehicle through, there's not much left, and he's done well to get that's to there. Good go, good go. I reckon we just winch over that little bit and you're good. We'll run that winch cable out and get him to the top. Mate, that is a good effort. I didn't even realise it's that way. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Nice one, mate. Okay, on to the next challenge. Beat you, madman. 
How good was that? Mate, what a control, that was the most controlled drive we've seen. So far, your eye drive in there, are you using that on these hills? I did, mate, I did. What do you got um, So I set it to what we call our ultimate setting, ultimate six. So what I was trying to do well, um, is bring in the power curve earlier in the throttle. So for those of you that have driven diesels, you, you know there's that flat spot? Yep. So I just wanted to get rid of that. And when I wanted the power, the power was there. So in that clay, I guess, you're, you're not coming into it like revving as hard as you can. You're just sort of almost idling into them. As That's you need it. to. Yeah, spot on, spot on. Right. So there, there, there's those parts of that hill where, you know, you think, geez, I could possibly break something if they yep. end up jumping or bouncing. So that was a great time to back it off uh, throttle-wise, but then having it set to that ultimate setting, it was there when I needed it. As soon as I put that accelerator back down, the power was on. So it just gave me, there was no dead spot for me. Right. Uh, it just made it a lot easier. Right Even same. makes a beginner guy look pretty good. I, don't know if the, I reckon you're playing yourself down here. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon there's some low talk here. I think we've got big things to see from you. Now, the iDrive units, are they, what, uh, universal across one unit for every car or, or a separate unit for every car? How does it work? Yeah, yeah, good question. Specific for each vehicle. Right. We've got over 700 applications. Oh, it's true. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. We, 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 a big cross-section of four-wheel drives through to cars, performance vehicles. Uh, anywhere where you want to have better control over your throttle response. So if you're on a full drive, there'll be an iDrive for you. Oh, definitely. All right, definitely. Well, for now though, let's worry about getting the sea up there. Yeah, that's us. Yeah, we've got to go. Looking forward to it. All right. Good, good on track. you, mate. As is usually the case around here, the track is soon pointing skyward, and we're gaining altitude by the metre. Higher up ahead, we can start to see the snow line, but between us and that, there's some pretty gnarly challenges. Michael again lets his 80 monstrous way up the climb. In the dry, you'd probably barely notice this pinch, but with water on the track, you've got to be a lot more careful. Drive the ruts, just try and keep the wheels straight is the only advice on these hills. Keep your throttle nice and even as much as you can. Just keeps going these hills. Nicely controlled drive from Shono. All right, now it's my go. I'm gonna break my own rule here and go with just a little more momentum than I perhaps normally would. And I'm hoping that's gonna carry me through some of that slippery section up the top. Yes, the D-Max. Oh, the places this thing can go. Come on. Oh, good drive, mate. Good drive. 31 all terrains on a hill like this with not much traction. He's happy, he's happy, he deserves to be. That was a fantastic drive. Now for the other boys. Of course, if we're honest with ourselves, 90% of that is the pilot. Alrighty, Rocket's turn. Something tells me he's gonna scream up here. What hill, mate? That thing's like a demon tractor. It's possessed. <laughs> Scared the life out of me. Pete's turn now, and as has been the case throughout this entire trip, I reckon Pete's just gonna take this gently and walk up here as if there's no hill there at all. Now, I predict Jay will pick up a couple of wheels through here, especially through that rutted section halfway up. But just maintains that momentum, keeps going. You'll make it no problem. Good drive, mate. Good drive. He's happy. He's stoked. Now, one of the things I've just noticed, and I get in the good habit of this, since I've broken a lot of axle studs, is when I do a lot of hard throttle movements, like I'm really into it, a lot of right foot, I get out and check these axle studs. Now these nuts here sometimes get loose, and i found that when these get loose, you're more likely to, in fact, it's almost a sure thing you're gonna break these axle studs. So I just make the habit of getting out, chucking a 13 on them. These ones are oversized studs, but look how loose these ones are already. And I reckon if I kept driving at the top of this hill, no doubt about it, I probably would have broken these axle studs. Look at that, that one's really loose. <laughs> That's bad. There we go, there's a good tip for anyone with a floating rear axle, like a 80 series, a 60 or a 100, just get out there and, oh, that one's really loose. And just tighten these up. With the steepest part of the climb under our belts, we're starting to head up into the clouds and the snow, well, it's coming down to meet us. What's that white stuff out there, mate? 
Far out, we must be getting high now, mate. Still, you know, you, you, you know it's gonna be up here. You know it snows, Victoria and I country, but it still, you just go, what? There's a fair bit of it around, too. I think more is forecast, too, bud. We're still, we're still 500 metres from our uh, end goal. Yeah, here's a little tip, mate. Don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> yep, that's good advice, mate. Now, it turns out we've timed our visit here with what is reported to be the start of a massive winter blizzard. All across the state, there's been reports of huge snowfalls and freezing conditions. And we're heading right up into it. Up front, the new line camera car is starting to look like a snowball. And as we push on, the snow just gets thicker and thicker. How good is this? Wow. 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 This is unbelievable. This is the most amazing four-wheel drive experience I've ever probably had. I have never seen anything like this in all my life. Absolutely amazing. Absolute treat to be up here. With everything starting to white out and the trees closing in, the camera boys are struggling to find where the track actually is. All right, what do you reckon, just those ones? Try and get through these ones here and work our way along. What's happened here, folks, is that the weight of the snow is actually bringing all the branches down onto the track. It's incredible to see. Ordinarily, all of these would be upright like a tree like a tree should be not hanging on the ground <laughs> see that out this flick straight back up go straight back yeah, so you just need to give it a bit of you just got to take the tips off really yeah, it's like pruning this is like a <laughs> look at that <laughs> that's yeah, so covered cool. in snow <laughs> You can feel the temperature dropping radically. Camping tonight will be pretty wild. John, I, this is pretty darn impressive, mate. Mate, I'm thinking the same, I'm thinking the same. And um, I'll tell you what else is pretty impressive. What's that, bud? Well, mate, we're getting really close to um, that second uh, pub I was telling you about. No, we'll have to leave that for tomorrow, mate. I reckon we push on towards camp. There's no way there's a pub up here. Yeah, it is actually. It's a great little spot you can camp right there and um, it will be cold and guarantee that much. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but there's a helipad not too far from here. I reckon we aim for that and, uh, I don't know, I'll have a look at this pub of yours tomorrow maybe for a coffee in the morning or something. Not a chance, mate. We'll get there tonight and um, out of the bar will be open anyway. It's a um, pretty casual sort of bar. Don't expect too much, but um, enjoyable all the same. I reckon um, the boys will be keen anyway. I don't know about Graham. I think Sean's a bit delirious. Does he realise he's in the snow on the middle of the side of the mountain? Well, that's what I'm getting at, Rocket. But anyway, he's uh, he's a strange lad, as you know. We'll let him have his fantasies. <laughs> that's all right if Sean's paying. I like the way you're thinking. That's all right, boys. You'll be surprised and pleasantly too, I reckon. Um, cold beer on tap. All right, well, look at this snow. Lead on, mate, and we'll see this mystery pub of yours. What an amazing experience, four-wheel driving in the snow, folks. We'd love to know, have you ever four-wheel drived or even camped in the snow? We'd love to hear your story. As the snow gets deeper, we've soon got a few more obstacles to negotiate. Just come across this tree down here and I'm surprised there hasn't been more down actually given the weather. Could still be, but uh, we just can't get over the top of it, so we're just going to knock it down for us now and we'll keep going. Hopefully we can find somewhere to camp reasonably soon. The sun will be down in about an hour we need to get a heap of firewood. We'll see how we go. Yay. You'll notice that I'm running my new Yokohama Geolander XMTs. They're quite an aggressive tyre, but they're perfect for this terrain. Uh, I've been running them for a few days now. They're absolutely brilliant, magic. I'm loving them to death. So they suit the snow, all the hard off-road high country stuff. But tell us, what do you think? Would you run these tyres on your car? Let us know in the comments. Look at this, will ya? This snow is insane. And it's caught Michael out as he tries to slip around that fallen tree. Michael's just about come off the track over here. He's trying to go around that log. He slipped sideways and it's about a 20 foot drop on the other side. You really don't want him to drop off the edge. So I'm going to try, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to try using the camera car. Pull his ass in back around this way. We'll see how we go. As beautiful as this is, it can be downright treacherous. Off to the right hand side is one heck of a drop. And with every movement, Michael's sliding closer and closer to that drop. Safety's paramount right here. We've got to get him out of there and do it in a safe manner. Of course, the good thing about snow is there's virtually no traction there, so pulling that vehicle sideways is not that hard. There, Held the vehicle tight so he couldn't go over. He was just reversing back. Now he's back on the track. 
Have a look at that, will you? It is so slippery. But the good thing is, he's out and he's away from that edge. As night falls, the camera car is the next victim of this slippery track. So once again, it's out with the Dominator winch. Camera car's come around a corner. Couldn't see, it's so slippery here. It's a little bit off camber. Camera car just slipped into the gutter. I'm trying to get Michael in the opposite gut gutter and see if we can actually pull the camera car out. We'll see how we go, eh? There we go. I think we've just got it back onto the track now. A little bit of winching. You just don't want to go over this edge. It's just slow going. The, the snow is so deep. It's just like bottomless snow. Pretty cool, really. <laughs> the blizzard has well and truly set in by the time we finally roll into camp. And I can tell you, I'm developing a powerful thirst. Just here on our left, mate. What's this, mate? Stuff on the left. That's, uh, that's where the bar will be. Well, if it's here, it ain't open. I can't see any lights. No, look, it's not yet. It's not yet. But just give us some time. It's a short walk. Let's get um, camp all set up and, um, yeah, get right into it, I suppose. I smell a rat. Mate, this is a bar that, oh, let's just say, you want to behave yourself in it because you'll easily get kicked out. In Australia, we don't get to camp in extreme conditions like this very often. And so I see this as being an absolute privilege. The temps tonight are set to go down to around minus five to minus eight. Now that might seem crazy, but what an experience. And of course we are well prepared. How good is this, Victorian high country, middle of winter? We have been into this little spot here before and there have been cows grazing on grass in through here. And now, look at this snow. It's so dry, it's like talcum powder. Look at that. Incredible. You can see I'm using L mesh floor down here because just as it keeps sand out, well, tonight, she's keeping snow out. How good is it? Sean's trying out his new 270 degree awning from Adventure Kings, and in these conditions, looks pretty darn useful. But he's also got another trick up his sleeve. What I'm doing here, I think is an absolute genius idea. I've got myself an electric blanket. Now, you're thinking, you're out camping, Sean. How the heck are you gonna run an electric blanket? Now, this electric blanket is about a 70 watt, it will draw maximum 70 watts, absolute maximum. Now, I've got a Red Arc 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now, because it's clean, safe power, and it's rated for higher than this, I'll be able to run a nice electric blanket, warm the whole swag up, and when I get in tonight, holy heck, singlets and box of shorts only, I reckon. A camp like this is gonna be pretty miserable without a fire. So we grab the Nebo torches and go hunt out some firewood. With the fire crackling, there's just one thing still missing. Mate, favourite campsite, 2019. That's a big call, cool, mate. Like, this is cracking, look at it. Well, just for the fact, you camp in the snow. Like, yeah. How often do you get to do that? And not just, it's deep. Like, I went down to my waist getting firewood. <laughs> if, as long as you can be warm in the snow. Yeah, that's it. You and be we're prepared. all pretty warm. We've got to be prepared. I think it will be one of those nights you'll remember for a long time, mate. Speaking of be prepared, mate, there is no bar here. And I'm a little bit disappointed in you because I was yeah. very excited about that. No bar? Where is it? There is no bar here, mate. Well, well, you boys have little faith. I said there will be a bar, there will be a bar. I've looked everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there is no <laughs> bar, mate. Look, just hang tight and I'll call you over in a second. All right? What's he gonna do? He's up to something. All right, here we go. So right here, you're looking at Shawno's pub. I've got the old 270 degree awning out. Gonna rip the Dometic out. Schooner glasses, of course. You can't, you can't run any reputable bar without schooner glasses. Now, I'll get a couple of iron jacks out for the boys. And there's one more touch, I suppose, that this bar is gonna need. Because at the end of the day, we're going for a bit of a themed bar. I'll turn the light on. That means the bar's in business. There we go. One more touch, I'll call the boys over. All right. All right, boys. Sure those bars open. Oh, look at this. <laughs> My boy. Look at this. Well, I take it all back, mate. We've got a bar in one of the highest places in Australia right now, and uh, Shorno's bar is officially in service. Pour me a beer, sir. Really easy. <laughs> you, the good news is you don't have to worry about anything getting too cold. So just gra oh, grab one. Grab, grab one. You got to do it at an angle. I'll give you right. half. When I was in uh, public in school, we got told that extra head was always good, mate. And that's a, that's something I live yeah, by today. Well, boys, 
The bar's officially open. Cheers, cheers, cheers eh? Mate. Cheers, How cheers. good is this, boys? <laughs> the highest bar in Australia right now. Yep. With an unlicensed publican. <laughs> and I will drink to that. Yeah. Cheers, my boy. <laughs> what an epic day. And there's more to come tomorrow. We've camped in some pretty wild places in our travels, but this is something pretty darn special. The snow has been falling all night, and even the locals are looking a bit out of their depth. The temperature this morning is still below zero, and just look at that ice coating the Forbies. Definitely not your typical Aussie look. Despite the temps last night, however, the camping up here was surprisingly comfortable, which is a testament to having the right gear for the situation. I've got to say that last night's little addition to the old swag, the old Pallister Whale, was um, the electric blanket and the most amazing night's sleep. In fact, safe to say, it actually got too warm. I left it on all night, despite all the advice from the camera crew saying you're only supposed to warm the bed up with it. I actually left it on setting number three all night. Woke up really hot, a bit like a prune. And the best thing about it is, checked on the old uh, Red Arc Manager 30 and um, I've still got 80% battery. So heaps of battery, warm night's sleep, that is a crazy little addition to the campsite and um, I think it's quite ingenious, really. It's a pity to have to leave this magic spot so soon, but we've got a date with Mount Skeen and our third pub today, so it's time to start packing up. Well, time to pack up the Shawno Bar, which soon became the Shawno Cafe in the morning, and um, something to be said about these 270-degree awnings. So good to have an undercover space when you're at camp, and I suppose the same principles apply. It doesn't matter if it's raining or you've got a lot of sun, you want a bit of shade, just being undercover at your campsite really takes your whole campsite to the next level. Now, last night a blizzard actually came through, strong winds, didn't even get outside the swag. I was just crossing my fingers that this would be all right in the morning, and as you can see, has not moved an inch. So, well, if it can handle that, I reckon it can handle just about anything I throw it at. So I'll pack it up now, get ready to hit the tracks again. How cool does that look? Pardon the pun. Give us a thumbs up if you'd be keen to camp in the snow like we are. I tell you what, Packing up in these conditions is definitely a bit of a challenge. Zips are frozen shut, awnings are iced over, and it's cold as heck. But despite that, we've soon got everything under control and are about ready to hit the tracks again. Oh, have a go at that snow, will you? Oh, man. Oh, it is puking down out there. Unbelievable snowfalls. Oh, what an epic campsite. So beautiful. What a campsite. I'll never forget this. I can hardly see out the windscreen. So epic. You just don't get this in Australia. Well, Sean, that is a camp that'll go down in history, mate. No, you're not wrong, mate. I reckon um, a lot of people are probably thinking that We'd be mad to camp in the snow, but if you're prepared, that was, that'll go down as all time, mate. I'll tell you what, guys, that's actually the first time I've ever actually camped in the snow, and thank God, my wife packed a hot water bottle. You gotta invest in an electric blanket rocket. <laughs> now, the thing about the high country, mate, is everything's hills. So in order for us to go, as, as strange as it sounds, in order for us to go up and look at the snow on Mount Skeen, we've gotta go down out of the snow on this one. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You've got to go up and down a fair bit. It's, um, we're going to have our work cut out. I'm, I'm excited. Righto, let's blaze a path. Look at the view in front of us. Speaking of good views, the camera crew are having a great time up front in the big GU. I reckon these boys have got a pretty good gig, right? To get to the start of our Mount Skeen trip, we've got to descend all the way back into the valley. And soon enough, we're heading back below the snow line. Up ahead, We've got a couple more rivers to negotiate, and boy oh boy, at this time of year, they are flowing. Well, that, that current is quite strong. Oh, golly. I'll tell you what, you'd want to be careful. If it was rushing any more than that, you'd think twice about crossing it. While it's flowing fast, this little creek is pretty manageable. 
further up is something a bit more significant. This one's real daunting because it could be a large hole in the middle, maybe a tree's fallen down or been washed downstream, we just don't know. And of course, then there's always the speed with which that water is flowing. So it is a little bit of a sketchy crossing. Whilst it's a little daunting, we've soon got a plan in place. Well, mate, that's a river of consequence. Absolute cracking river. Quite deep and fast flowing. Obviously, a lot of people have driven it. Yeah, not recently, though. Not recently. There's no tyre tracks coming in or out of this bad boy. I think there's there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm just chatting with Rocket before, and he's got the heaviest vehicle. Also got the, the biggest set of um, uh, tyres. Tyres, yeah, he's around. got a big set of tyres on the back there. I'm yeah. just thinking that he might be the right, the right vehicle to go first. Rocket is kind of, he'll do that. And I'm thinking, like, if we put Michael's winch on the back of Rocket, With free spool it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. free spool him out. So yep. if he gets stuck, we can pull him backwards. I might even go on the back of that vehicle as another anchor point. So yes. we've got a big solid anchor down here. Yes. If Rocket makes it look easy, then we'll see how well, we then go. Then we should be right. Yep. What I'm worried about is the smaller utes, like the D-Max, those sort of utes might float I've, a little bit. Yeah. I think, look, well, step number one, let's get Rocket down here and have a look at it. But I think before anything else, in the interest of, as we know, you never do a river crossing without walking it first in country or sections of country. Day, mate. The basics of it are we need something big and heavy to go in there. Yeah. That doesn't float. Yeah. It's not me. I'm out. <laughs> I, I look at me. I get up. You don't want to see these little pin legs go over. Go no there. one wants to can see you, them. Can you know how cold it is in there. It'll be a lot colder when you get out. Trust me. <laughs> now, take those pants off. <laughs> You've been waiting a while to say that to me, haven't you? <laughs> in you get. Do you reckon? Not? Yeah. It's probably. It is in the interest of safety, bro. You're right. All right. Go yeah, for right. it. No, watch me. Stop. I've, got a lot of I've got a lot of layers on. Stop that man undies on. Hey, yeah, look at the undies. <laughs> Shut up. I didn't know I was going to the water crossing today. <laughs> How is it? Keep going. Keep going. I feel sick. <laughs> Keep going. Rocky base. <laughs> you're in, you're committed. That's a pretty strong flow. Yeah, that, that'll be how deep it is, probably. Thing with the river crossing, you only have to go in the first like few metres, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. That's super cold, but as you can see, it's not that deep. No, and it was rocky. Oh, hard, like heaps of rocks, heaps of rocks. That, that little bit of sandy, but as soon as I got to like nearly to the old Johnson level, it um, rock, <laughs> Right up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having checked the depth and with a solid base, Rocket lines up to be the first across. Oh, think heavy thoughts. Think heavy thoughts. <laughs> right, the plan of attack here. I'm going to attach Michael's winch to the back of Rocket. Of course, as Rocket drives, it'll pull the winch cable out. If he gets into trouble, we'll just pull him back again under the winch. We'll see how we go. Now, you might think we're going a bit overboard here, but have a think about the consequences of being underprepared. Pays to play it safe. All right, seatbelts off for this one. Oh, it's deep. Rocket, I tell you what, that was a heart in the mouth situation, and I wasn't in the vehicle with you. Really, really stoked you made it through there, mate. <laughs> oh my god, that's the heart going. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! Man. Yeah! yeah There's your heart rate. Well, that was an exercise in caution, and as you saw, it went really, really well. Rocket drove across that as if there wasn't even a river there, to be honest with you. But I've said it before a few times, if you don't prepare for the worst and it happens, well, that's when it goes pear-shaped. But had Rocket got into trouble midway across there, we just would have winched him back. Simple as that. Michael's up next, and he's already hooked up to Rocket's heavy rig. And it's just a case of driving forward and winching as he goes. Given how light it is, we're still a bit concerned about the D-Max floating. So as a precaution, I'm hooking up to the back of Sean's 80. Are you good, mate? Right, mate. Let's see how the old SSD Max goes. <laughs> All right, take that tension off. We're going to go for it, okay? Trick here is not to let that strap 
get too loose. It's deep. Lots of traction. Whoa, that is deep, boys. <laughs> That's cool. I drove that out of my own steam, mate. Piece of pie, didn't even use the strap. That's good, that's good. There's nothing like a high country river crossing to get the old blood boiling. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked with that. All right, time to get the rest of the convoy through. Awesome. Holy heck, that was an absolute oh, no. epic, folks. We would really <laughs> like to know, what's the biggest river you've ever crossed? Woohoo! With the rivers out of the way, it's time to start our ascent up to Mount Skeen. Now, while in summer, Mount Skeen is literally a two-wheel drive road, in winter, it becomes a real snow playground. And with Michael's help, we've got the club permits to be able to visit. First though, we've got to get there. And with that blizzard last night, has come a lot of fallen trees. The track just seems to get tighter and tighter, and soon, it's out with the chainsaw. <laughs> Up ahead is a more serious log fall, and this one, right across the track. Mate, what is the plan here? Well, obviously the track goes straight through, but none of the vehicles are gonna get through no. without chopping this log out of the way, but it's a massive log, yeah. and it's actually fallen over another log that's dead over there, so yep. I was thinking of, what if I cut that tree? The whole thing should hopefully fall down. Let me just make several cuts along here so we can get a vehicle through. Mate, I didn't pay much attention in school, but if you use the lever arch fulcrum method, this is the lever, that is the arch, and your chainsaw shall be the fulcrum. Mate, give a man a big enough lever. <laughs> and he will move, move the earth. He'll move the earth. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, what do stand, you I'll stand way back over here. <laughs> you go and cut that tree down and we'll see what happens. Okay, that sounds fun. Right, All right how do you drive your car, just in case? <laughs> That's perfect! <laughs> well, not really. It's fallen along the track, which means a bit more cutting. But that's why we pack the chainsaws. With everyone on the tools, we've soon got the track open again and the convoy gets moving. At last, we make it to the start of the Mount Skeen climb. Right on cue, the snow is starting to fall again, and in the distance, we can see the snow cover on the final ascent. Before we get there though, Michael's got one more side excursion planned, and we're soon Ooh. back into the action. Oh. Oh. Tell you what, old black ducks, you don't worry about the snow on you. Get it off as quick as you can. Seat covers will look after themselves. Right up, let's get out of here. Winter Wonderland, you hear it said? Well, in Australia, you can drive in it. <laughs> How good is it? All oh, those clear views, they take a hammering. I forget to bring them in, I can bring them in, you see. If I just do that, they fold in. But I always forget to do it. And they hit trees all the time, but I've never broken one, which is a good thing. They need to be tough, they're gonna to be on one of my vehicles. <laughs> There's not that much snow on the ground. Fair bit of ice though, which could make things a little bit slippery. Keep that throttle nice though and be able to walk up this. So I've got my tyres down quite low, so I'm only about 15 psi today. And um, I'm finding that's making it pretty easy. I'm not spinning those tyres at all, just getting heaps of traction. We're walking up these snow capped hills. How good is this? Up ahead, the track is tightening up and we're back into panel scratching territory. It's a super tight little track. We're on here, uh, pretty muddy, fair bit of snow on it too. And um, I've got a lot of trees and branches just hitting the cab of the 80. Now you might know that the old 80 series isn't running in normal paint, it's actually running a Raptor coating. One of the good things about a Raptor coating is that even when I am hitting <laughs> these sticks and it's, it's dragging itself down, there's a big branch there, dragging itself sort of down the vehicle, it's actually quite 
scratch resistant. Now, I've done quite a lot of trips with this Cardian on and um, safe to say, the 80 still looks a million bucks, even though I'm driving terrain like this. <laughs> this is really tight. As we climb higher up towards the summit of Mount Skeen, the snow is starting to bucket down again. Oh, how good is this? It's absolutely puking snow. Oh man, this is absolutely sensational. What a treat to be able to drive in the snow, and quite a lot of it, here in Australia. Now, in order for us to be able to do this, we had to get permits to come up here, and we got the permits through going through a local club, and there's a lot of boxes you gotta to tick to get that permit, and I'm all for it. I think it's a fantastic idea. You see, there's a lot of talk about closing this entire region during winter, permits or no permits, just completely off limits. I can kind of see why. There's been a lot of rescues up here. A lot of people come up here ill-equipped, get into trouble. Local police have got to come up. Rescuers have got to come up. That's how these places get closed. So I cannot recommend this. Look at that. I cannot recommend this more highly, but do it the right way, folks. Go through the clubs, get your permits, and that way places like this remain open so that everyone can drive in the snow in Australia. <laughs> Look at it, will you? At long last, we're nearing the summit, and we hook back onto the main road for the final leg to check out one of the most spectacular winter views in Australia. If this doesn't make you want to get out in your four-wheel drive, I think your heart might not be pumping. What do you reckon? Would you come and see this? Oh, this is so cool. Have a look at this. Snow just flicking out everywhere. So cool. Now the darn sun's out, mate. I'm going to have to put some sunscreen on soon. We're getting four seasons in one day. Yeah, how's this though, mate? 1,500 metres above sea level. This is going to be up there with some of the highest tracks in Australia, right? 100%, mate. It's just a privilege, really, to be able to get up here and have a bit of a drive in these conditions. I mean, it's fresh snow, just sun's out. How good is it? Yeah, so good, mate. So good. Love this sort of four-wheel drive. I don't get to do it very often, but um, when I do, holy heck, I'm always smiling like a chimp. I reckon I might have come from a cold climate, mate. Because these trees, they're pretty sturdy, pretty stocky looking things, pretty hardy, pretty tough. But they're also pretty short. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, mate, I reckon there's a fair bit of similarity between you and those little short little gum trees out the side. It's been an absolutely incredible trip from Woods Point to Mount Skeen in some pretty wild conditions. And the Forbies, well, they've all held up perfectly. When you're trying to prepare your vehicle for extreme climates, and let's face it, Australia's got quite a few from the outback to right here in the Victorian high country in the extreme cold. One thing that a lot of people don't really take into consideration is their batteries. You see, the optimal charging temperature is 25 degrees. Any more or less can create issues with recharging your batteries. At zero degrees, your battery's ability to crank the engine is reduced by 35%. Now, a lesser battery just simply won't hold charge and will go flat right when you need it the most. I'm using the Century Overlander 4x4 batteries in Old Sooty here. In fact, in all my four-wheel drives, I can say that those things are tested to last in extreme climate. So when I'm down in the cold like this now and it's getting below zero overnight, I'm pretty confident as soon as I bump that key, it's gonna fire up in the morning. Well, it's been a wild adventure up in the snow and we've got one more item to tick off the list of our high country pub crawl. Time to head off the mountain. Shoi, Gobby. Yeah, I got you there, mate. Can you feel your feet yet? There's a few things, by the way, that can't feel right now. That cold up there. I uh, am real keen to find a fireplace in an old country pub. What do you say? Well, mate, just down the bottom of this hill, the third and final pub of our pub crawl, mate, um, the Jamison. And the good news is, as I understand it... Sure, sure, is that correct? Like always, mate. <laughs> now, of course, look, any day you can go and drive in the snow and then finish up at a pub with a little wood fire on and a cold beer. Holy heck, that's a good day. Mate, you reckon we could sneak a palmy in? <laughs> you know we can. All right, well, you lead on. Mike, get a copy? Sure do, over. Our fearless leader, taking us to the top of the mountain and back safely, mate. Thank you so much. Fantastic day. It was a bloody good day. It was certainly a bloody good day. Not long now, we'll be at the pub. i tell you what, I don't know what more excited about. The fact that I went to the snow today or I'm getting back to the pub. They're both pretty cool things to be excited about, mate. Jay. You have been like a kid in a candy store up there all day today. For a bloke that tries to steer clear of the snow, you had a pretty good day. Oh, I'm converted, mate. The snow's awesome. It's not bad fun, is it? And Pete, testing doesn't get much better, mate. How'd you go up there in the snow today? I had an absolute ball. You know, it's a shame to save us. It just goes so quickly, doesn't it? But, um, there is gold at the end of the rainbow, 
have a, a, a nice cleansing ale with you, mate. Jeez, mate, you're almost a poet. Tell you what, for that, for that, mate, I'm going to give you the honour of first shout. <laughs> As the sun sets over the mountains, it's time for us to say goodbye to this amazing part of the world for another year. And now, set our sights on the main bar at the Jamison Pub. The Courthouse Hotel is the perfect place to start or end a high country adventure and for us, the chance to spend one more night with some great mates. <laughs> Boys! Cheers! Cheers, Cheers. 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 Cheers bud. How good is this, eh? Well, Victorian high country, we have done the pub crawl to end all pub crawls. Starting at one of the, the thing with the thing with pub crawls in Victorian high country is there's a lot of hills, a lot of valleys. There's a lot of time between pubs. <laughs> well, there is a lot of time between pubs. That one in the middle, dodges pub of the too. The servers uh, are pretty poor. The, pub, the publican, I'm going to check his license because that bloke, shady ass. But folks, my highlight, snow, without a yeah. doubt. Yeah. I reckon the highlight was not ruining my seat covers, to be honest with you. Some of those hills, holy heck, but we, got, we saw the best of the high country, really. I think, you know what, the high country, it's about steep, it's about gnarly, and it is, if you can time at the right time of year, it's about snow. Mm. Because it is so special to be able to come up here and drive in the snow. Oh, if, I, if we could be in a hut near snow. Yeah, I know. Not just together with all the boys I mean, sort of thing. You know? You're getting all romantic, mate. <laughs> high country will do that to you, folks. Get up here, put it on your bucket list, and if you do visit a few pubs, this is an absolute cracker. Get into one of these, start anywhere you like, though, and get to the high country, because as I've always said, one of the best places in Oz. Absolutely, here, mate. mate. Folks, stick around because we'd like to share some of the gear that we've used on this trip with you. Some of the gear that's made this trip easier for us and also a lot more comfortable as well. Not to mention the outtakes, of course. Our favourite part. I'll be honest with you, I actually skip right to the outtakes first, then I go back <laughs> to the beginning and watch the rest. So stick around because those two bits are coming up next, but I'm going to finish this and you're going to buy me another. Is that true? Well, something like that. <laughs> Not in that order, mate. Cheers, folks. <laughs> Oh, mate, I don't know about you, but my favourite part of the show, the part, not when we're at the front of the pub, but that is pretty good. I'm talking about the gear we use in yep. the high country to keep yep. these trips going. Now, there's a stack of gear, and one particular product that I use that absolutely saved our bacon, mate. I'm right. talking about the Milwaukee 18 volt brushless chainsaw. Now, first time using it, so I was pretty excited about it, and um, with a big 12 amp hour battery, did not need to even charge it. It did the whole, did two campsites, yep. plus you uh, saw the trees we knocked we down. We had to knock down some trees on the track. I was I was blown away by it. I'm gonna admit, I thought, really? It works it's so you know, well. And the best thing about it, mate, is I don't need to carry fuel inside no. my vehicle. It usually stinks the whole vehicle out, you know, so I am stoked with that. You're not the cleanest bloke, mate. So if you can get fuel out of your car, uh, truck, I reckon that is number one. In fact, I'm looking at one of those electrics myself. I think they're the way to go. Now, speaking of dirty things, <laughs> I'm one of them. Now, the black duck seat covers, we've got a pretty brand new D-Max here that I'm driving around. It's nice to be able to jump in there when you're absolutely filthy and not care about your factory seats. The black duck seat covers, when I get back, we'll just chuck those in the wash, we'll look after those, don't worry about them, but look at me. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm disgusting, a mate. Filthy bugger. You also smell bad. Do I? <laughs> I'm just gonna add that, but you do, I'm standing right guys, yeah. There you go. They can't, they can't help you with smells, but they will stop the dirt getting on your seat. So the black duck seat covers. Yeah, I've got them in my cars as well, absolutely Big amazing. Mate, another product, I think a lot of questions have come through on the YouTube channel about the Raptor coating that I've got on my vehicle. Yeah, you get asked all the time. Exactly right, and it proves it's worth on this trip, I reckon. Yeah. We get, went through some really tight really country. Tight. It was literally pinstripes all down the new Raptor, which um, you got a few of the D-Max I saw, Rocket, yeah. well, just added to the collection. Yeah, but me, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, I, I got off pretty much scot-free. And, yep. um, and the best thing about the Raptor coating does protect the paint, mm -hmm. but as soon as you clean, it's actually quite easy to clean. So yeah. just being yeah. out in the rain out in front of the pub here, yeah. I reckon that's a wash for old sooty. It'll be looking good as new tomorrow. What would be great though, is if you could apply it one day to a vehicle that was actually worth protecting. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> now look folks, I've had to do a fair share, I'll just say once or twice, reverse back down the hill and have another crack at it. And on these steep high country hills, reversing down them, puts the wind up me. So the clear view mirrors that I've got, I've loved them. The amount of vision I've got out the back has made that so much easier. And I've got a little addition to mine, they're power folds, but they've addition, a little addition, I think, oh, science, I don't know how it works, but when I lock the car, they fold back in. When I come back in and turn the car back on, they fold out. Mm. I reckon that's pretty sick. You don't really need it out here. In Extra the vision for you, mate. And anything to help your driving, let's just put it that way. <laughs> it's been a little bit shocking this trip, <laughs> I will say, but those clear views, you haven't got them on your truck. I've now got them on all mine. Yeah. Get yourself a set. And one last product, of course. You might have seen me wearing this one. Oh, it's, it's truth, you may be nervous there, mate. I know you, what am I grabbing for? <laughs> it's the old Snatch Flanny, mate. Now, yep. this thing here, I've had it on for four days straight. So yeah. it's, it's due for a wash, but I love it that much, mate. 
Firstly, when you walk into a pub with one of these, you'll probably get served first, to be you honest. Will. Yep. Um, does promote uh, beard growth. Except I'm sure. Except for me. <laughs> and um, I reckon as well, yep. you've become about 20% better with an axe or a cutting implement on wood. You actually do. This is so, a fact. This and you saw science. me cut down those trees. I was... Ordinarily, you're scared of chainsaws, but because you had that flat iron, and they're, honestly, they're a top quality flano. I'm going to wear mine tonight at the bar. You're not the same time, mate. Come I on. I am. You're going to have to change yours. It's five days old, mate, for goodness sake. And look, whilst we're on it, the new beanies we've got. Dude, I've been in All this time. for the last five days as well. She's looking a bit eager going as well, but <laughs> save my noggin from getting cold. Well, mate, on that note, I want to thank everyone for watching our show in the high country. It's been an absolute epic, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. But for now, we're going to jump inside the old Jamison pub. We've got the fire on, the fire. have a couple of beers, oh. and um, thanks again for watching. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a second of the action. Cheers, legends. That's your shout too, by the way. Again. What's yeah, always, always your shout? See how it works, mate. See how it works. How does this go down? Sunny's nearly fell off, putting them on the spool, oh, they're nearly, oh, that was close. Can you so, eat this chorizo uncooked, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah absolutely. Do you reckon you can? Yeah. Right. yeah. Have a oh, we got go. raw chicken. <laughs> How well, is it? Not even weird. This is the bit that makes or breaks you. It's called lactic acid. You can push through the pain barrier, though. It's all mental from here on. <laughs> yeah, the double yoke coming straight your way. Coming. Oh, no! Quick, get your ab. You, I'm here. You're too slow. <laughs> you look helpless. <laughs> you can't do that. It's chilly all over you. You want I could get my missus to have a go at it? Please! Get it, Sam! Come and drive this! But no light bar for me. There's all what? There's the old uh... Oh, it's just reach over me here, mate. Oh, I'm coming behind you. Yep, <laughs> not the first time. <laughs> there we go. I've just put a heap of branches <laughs> under Shauno's seat. We'll see if he notices when he jumps in. <laughs> a bit, bit of grub on the boil. Bit of what? Bit of grub on the boil. Bit of food. Can we start it again? Flip your camera on. <laughs> Funny faces you pull when you're trying to take your boots off. My name's Graham Keel, and I like cafes and craft beer. We <laughs> don't have to ride in car and take away. Oh, that. <laughs> That's it. No, you got it shorter strokes. No. <laughs> That's too cold. <laughs> Real funny. Real funny. He's laughing. <laughs> oh, it's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> you want me to try? The best bit about that is, well, he just started something he probably regrets. I heard you were collecting plywood, bro. Can't reach my seatbelt, I've got too much clothing on. <laughs> wanted to show you inside here, but the door's actually frozen over. How do you get in your car when it freezes? Oh, come on, sweetie, so open up for us. It's too cold, but. You're right. Oh, touch my leg. No, I don't want to touch your leg. Oh, it's going blue. What happened to the what happened to your Johnson? It went to an innie. Rocket still. He's my hero today, actually well. Batman Undies over here is my hero. But <laughs> Oh, come on, girl. I've been clapping pretty good today. Yeah, off you go. Ooh, ooh, on that note. <laughs> There's a cameraman out here. The cameraman's standing out there. You see him? There they are. Hello, you cameraman. Say hello to the cameraman. How you going, boys? There they are. Hey! <laughs> see you later, boys. Folks, stick around because we're going to share some secrets. Not secrets at all. I've got any secrets. Well, I've got a little secret to tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that. Can't use that. So, little tip for the unclothes, when you're dealing with raw chicken, you, you don't want to muck around with it. Like, if no. you're going to start cooking other things on your chopping board, I'll just use the raw chicken. Yep. You simply turn it over. Hang on. That, <laughs> go back. I'll wash this one because on the other side, it's full of mould. 
<laughs> show them that. Show that, them that. Disgusting. The cameraman's laughing. That's the disgusting. The cameraman's laughing. That's, that's Cape York mold. Show, show, show the other side. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> and you're cooking dinner on that. <laughs> Few deep water crossing in Cape York. Come straight to the high country. A little bit of humidity on the way. Maybe you've. I'm going to clean this obviously, and then just uh, get back into the next little bit. <laughs> stir that. Stir that. Stir that.